Hello and welcome to another Two Minutes Tuesday technical training. Let's get started. This schematic shows how most protein therapeutics are produced and purified using mammalian cell culture. Our focus today is on downstream purification and viral safety, specifically the nanofiltration step designed explicitly to remove any potential endogenous or contaminating virus. We recommend you watch our viral clearance overview before proceeding. It can be found here. Previous videos covered other viral clearance steps that are effective for inactivating enveloped viruses. However, nanofiltration, which in most downstream purification schemes for protein therapeutics, is implemented at the end of the process and just prior to the final buffer exchange and concentration step to create the bulk drug substance. This can be very effective at removing both non-enveloped and enveloped viruses. Due to the size of viruses, the use of a 20 nanometer pore-sized nanofilter has become industry practice. As nanofilters offer consistently high passage of the protein of interest, they are ideal for bioprocessing. Nanofilters separate viruses from the protein of interest via two size exclusion mechanisms, as seen here. In both cases, the virus must remain in the retentate, yet allowing the product of interest to pass through. To validate virus removal for regulatory filings, small-scale spiking studies are conducted by first validating a scaled-down model of the at-scale manufacturing process. Next, using a predetermined concentration of known virus, and after conducting this step using identical conditions as seen at large scale, the amount of virus remaining is quantified to determine log reduction value. The performance of nanofilters is characterized as seen here. Thus, during process development, a risk-based approach evaluation using scaled-down studies should be conducted on a wide range of factors that can impact these parameters as part of a comprehensive design of experiment program. Once run, parameters are established at small scale. They must be reproduced and validated as process scale-up takes place. Nanofilters are expensive, cannot be reused, and are susceptible to clogging. So a pre-filter is often used to clarify the starting material to optimize performance. In addition, if performance of the filter falters, breakthrough of virus can occur, so understanding the conditions that impact breakthrough is paramount. Thank you for listening. And for more information on this, and other bioprocessing topics, including expert interviews, please go to our Two Minutes Tuesday archive. Have a great day.